Remix is a framework that uses the power of the backend and almost magic routing to help you build your apps using React. One of the coolest features in this platform is nested routes. Instead of loading different parts of the page dynamically, like in a single page app, it fetches and caches parts of the page on the server, and then it sends it fully formed onto the client. Let's go ahead and install it using npx create remix at latest. I'll call mine remix play. Notice that it's assuming that you're gonna to wanna to run this on a server. We'll pick the default, the Remix app server. I prefer vanilla JavaScript, but be mindful that the documentation assumes that you'll be working in TypeScript. And I'll just say that I do want it to run the npm install command. Let's open this up in Visual Studio Code. Let's take a look first at remix.config.js. This has some defaults for how things are built and which directories Remix is going to use. On the package.json file, you can see the different commands you can run. There's also a config file for JavaScript, which spells out different configuration variables for React. There are two main folders. The public folder is for files that you want published along with your project. The app folder is where we do most of our work. There are two special entry points for your app. The entry client is the JavaScript that will load into the browser. The server entry point is what runs on your server. You probably won't need to touch these two files. Next is the root file, which is what creates your page code. We're importing a bunch of modules here at the top, and then we're exporting a couple of things. Notice how we're exporting a meta object here. This lets us create meta tags in our documents. Here we're creating one for the title of our page. If you look at the root file, you'll notice something that looks like an HTML page, and it is using a lot of the components that we imported. Here's the component for the meta tag, which right now has the title that we created right here. This outlet component is where your application will go, and the scroll restoration is to manage updates to the page. Finally, this live reload component is to manage live reloading during development. You can see that there is a links component if we want to import any CSS, as well as a scripts component. This is where you would add any additional scripts that you want to load on your final page. Let's go ahead and run the development command. When you do that, the Remix app server starts. Notice that we added a cache folder and that now there is a build folder in our public folder. Let's see how we can add some styles to our project. In the routes folder, in the index.jsx file, you can see that there are some basic styles added here in the React format. Let's go ahead and get rid of those. We can go back into the root.jsx file. And in the same way that we're adding a meta function right here, we can go ahead and add links. Here we can return an array of links. So we'll return a link with a relation of style sheet. And here we could refer to a URL from a CDN, or we can refer to a local file. I'm gonna to refer to an object and I'll go ahead and import this from a file. Let's go ahead and add that to the app folder. And we'll try adding a simple style. You can also add an external style sheet. Let's go ahead and add Pico CSS. After we install the library, we can import the styles from the node modules folder and add it to our links array. We'll go ahead and wrap this outlet with a container so that it looks a little bit nicer. Now this is a pretty basic style sheet, so you can still go ahead and add inline styles or you can add things to your shared CSS file. Let's go ahead and change the color of the primary variable in Pico CSS. And we'll make some changes to all the H tags. We'll also add some styles that will affect the main content on my homepage. Our index route has all this content for the page. We're gonna get rid of most of this and add some basic content. Let's say that we wanted to add another page into our website. We can do that by creating another route. I'm gonna create a new file called cast.jsx. I'll create a new React component. I'm gonna call it cast. Now I can go to that route's URL. Let's go ahead and change this a little bit. Now here's where Remix can get a little interesting. You can create routes that are nested inside other routes. To do that, we're gonna to need to make a folder. I'm gonna call this cast. And in that folder, I'm going to put an index file. I'll give it a name of cast index route right now. And I'll go ahead and place a paragraph with some lorem ipsum text. Now, I wanna put this inside my cast route right here and I'll import the outlet. Now I can use that outlet component somewhere on my page. You can also create a dynamic route that receives information. I'm gonna create another file right here under cast and I'll start it with a dollar sign and I'll call it cast ID. 
this special route is going to be able to receive data from the URL. To do this, we'll need an import and we'll get something called use params from Remix. Once we have that, we'll create a function called cast member. And in here, we'll create a variable to hold our parameters. Now we'll simply output that variable from params into our div. The variable is named cast ID because that's the name of our file. Now we can go to that URL and just add a number to our cast. Let's take a look at another one of the interesting features of Remix, how you can import data using the server. To do that, let's go back into this index right here. We're going to import something called use loader data, and we're also going to use the link component. This loader will allow us to get data. And the interesting thing here is that we're getting it from the server. We'll use an async function using our loader to fetch some data from a server. Now I've added this onto one of my own servers, but this could be a call to a database. Once we have that, we can use this to export and we'll create a variable to hold the data that we receive from the server. Now it's just a matter of displaying that data. We'll take our data and then we will map it into a variable. We'll need to have a key. Thankfully, my data has an item called a cast ID. Now we can create some code to display our headers. And I've added some images into an images folder. There's also a property called the slug of each cast, which has the prefix for all my images. The thumbnails have an underscore TN and they have an SVG extension. We'll output the bio as well. And then we'll do a footer and we'll create a link to the different cast members. We're using the link component to go to a URL with the cast ID. And then we'll add a button here that says read more. Let's go back to the main cast page. Looks like I made a couple of typos. This needs to be actually use loader data, not use er loader data. And also need to export this function as the default method. You can see all the different aliens right here. And if we click on each one of these items, you'll see that it goes to the proper page. Let's go ahead and build that next. Let's go back into the cast ID page. And in addition to params, we're going to use loader data as well. Now I'm just going to copy the function from this other index page. On a real project, we may query the database directly right here and ask only for the data that we need. We'll go ahead and create a variable here for our data. And then in the return statement, we'll just build out our display. Now here, we're going to need to filter things. We'll use the JavaScript find method to go through the items and then find an item where the ID we got from the parameters is the same as the ID of the current item. Now we can use that here. And it wouldn't be a real web project without some typos. So it looks like it's telling me that I can't find module build, which I'm not sure why I put that in there. And this should, of course, be use loader data. So if we save that, we can try to refresh. And now it's telling you that it can find something called cast meme bear. OK, so that's not good. So cast mem bur. And uh, let's check it out now. Looks like it's mostly OK, except for the image. And that's because I forgot to put a period right here. So let's check it out. And now we get all of the data. So we can uh, hit the back button here and go to any one of these. Let's go ahead and add some navigation to our page. I'm going to create a new navbar file. I'm going to import the link component. And I'm doing this with Pico, so it will be really easy to create a basic navbar. With Pico, you can make two lists, one for the branding and one for the links. I want to put an image in here, so I'm going to have two list items for my branding. And I'm going to use the link component to link to the home page. And in here, I'm going to put an image and point to my logo. The branding will also point to the home page. The link to the cast will have a contrast tag, so it shows up white. Let's make sure we're linking to the cast right here. And we'll also modify the style sheet of the image to make sure that it shows up. Let's go back into the root file and import our nav bar into root. Finally, we'll add the component at right after the body tag. And then you should be able to see the navigation at the top. So now we can click back to the home page or go to the cast page. As a finishing touch, I'm going to add an image to my home page. 